Alrighty folks, thanks for clicking on today's video, James Cards FC here. If you're new to the channel, we talk about the financial side of the soccer card market, and today uh, we're going back to the basics of a slides sort of presentation to talk about the 2022, sorry, 2023 slash 2024 soccer card season preview, and I've titled this The New Era Starts Now. So we're going to talk about all of the players that I think we're going to be monitoring uh, over the next season, uh, as the season just kicked off underway in the Premier League this past Past weekend, uh, I went ahead and put together this slide presentation talking about some of the players in the sets that we might be hearing a lot about as we go through this next year of soccer and sort of how real life might affect the card market itself because there's a lot of different moving parts that are happening and we're at a really interesting point in real life soccer and, and sort of how that's going to relate to what I think of the cards going forward. So Without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I apologize for any rustiness. Uh, it's been a while since one of these, and my background actually changed. I have a new setup here, so if anything goes wrong technically, um, I'll just blame myself, I guess. So let's get into it. I will move myself up here, and we'll be good to go. So out with the old and in with the new. So the 2023 season will have a Ballon d'Or winner not named Messi or Ronaldo. Um, Messi will be winning the 2022 slash 2023 version of the award, despite if you think Holland deserves it or if Messi deserves it, Messi is going to win it. Uh, the betting markets have shown such and they're not going to be wrong. So uh, Messi will win the award for this current past season that he won the World Cup. Uh, but the next one is completely up for grabs. Um, the only other winners of the past decade are Mudrić and Benzema, and neither of them will win in 23-24. So this new season, we will have another new Ballon d'Or winner that is not Messi or Ronaldo, and it's very, very likely to be one of the younger stars of the game. So uh, further on this point, Messi is gone to the MLS. Ronaldo and many stars of recent years are gone to Saudi Arabia, and the crown for the best player in the world, at least in Europe, uh, is going to be up for grabs this season. Manchester City is the odds-on favorite from a club perspective to repeat as Champions League winners, but the competition behind them is formidable and staggered across the globe in terms of which teams are going to be able to compete with them. It is not Premier League focused, it is not La Liga focused, it is not Bundesliga focused. Um, the favorites in the Champions League besides Man City are scattered all across the globe. Uh, we're also entering a new era of soccer with all this combining together, and the results of it will have a dramatic effect on the card market, in my opinion, because so many players' legacies and so many teams' legacies are going to change so violently over the next few years because it is so wide open now that there's so much change. Messi and Ronaldo are gone. Uh, besides Man City, there's no super dominant clubs, and perhaps Man City over the next few years is, is less dominant uh, as teams like Chelsea uh, continue to splash around cash like they do now. So there's just a lot up for grabs right now in the market uh, and in the soccer card not just soccer market, but the soccer world in general. So uh, in my opinion, this is a really cool time to be involved in the market, and I wanted to take this time in this video to review the current landscape of the soccer world and how that relates back to the soccer card market. So going forward with one last shot at the Ballon d'Or. Now I made this slide and this presentation a few days ago so some of this uh funnily enough is already completely outdated but i will go through it as such so uh the new era of stars have arrived but there still might be one last shot for one of the older players to add to their legacy before the baton is truly passed and here are players and cards that i'm focusing on in terms of the older stars that might be able to win a ballon d'or this year and greatly increase their legacy so uh, I was able to come up with four guys. The four guys are Kevin De Bruyne, who is now injured, uh, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, he has his 2011 rookie sticker. And of course, the other key sets like 2014 Prism. Uh, actually, he's not in 2014 Prism, but he is in 2017 Chrome. He's in Euro Prism for 2016. He's in 2018 World Cup Prism. And all those super basic mainstream sets are be, would be the sets that I keep an eye on for Kevin De Bruyne in this next year, uh, assuming he can get healthy again. He's probably one of the favorites in terms of the older players that still might have a chance of getting the Ballon d'Or if he can put together a healthy and strong season. Uh, besides him, you have Mo Salah. Uh, he's, his rookie, or at least his main rookie, is the 2014 Tops Premier, and of course he's in the key sets as well. Same as De Bruyne, he's in 2017 Chrome, and he's in 2018 uh, Prism World Cup, and a few of those other big sets out there for him. Uh, I think it'll be tough for him to compete for the Ballon d'Or, but it is possible if he has a crazy good season and outperforms um, Holland in the Premier League, which I don't think he's going to do, uh, but it would take something like that for him to be able to win the award this next season. 
then you have Robert Lewandowski playing for Barcelona. Um, he has a 2008 rookie sticker. He actually has two of them. Uh, I gave the am- image example of the action shot right there, but he also has a portrait shot that is, um, at least according to pop reports, a, a bit more rare uh, than the action shot itself. So I would be paying attention to those. And then, of course, the key sets, um, like I talked about previously for Sala and De Bruyne. Lewandowski is also in sets like 2016 Euro Prism, 2017 Tops Chrome, 2018 Prism Premier League, and all those uh, fun mainstream sets. Uh, then, unfortunately, I had Neymar on this list. Again, I made this list a few days ago, and... The rumors back then uh, were that Neymar might be able to go to Barcelona for a season or two, uh, and that would give him a chance to uh, sort of reclaim his legacy and try and be the best player in Europe for this one season. But uh, he's going to Saudi Arabia, so feel free to ignore this. But if you're curious, the main rookie for Neymar is the 2009 Abril goal, uh, and he's also in other key sets. He is in 2014 Prism as well as 2017 Chrome. But um, I would not be looking at... uh, Neymar obviously going forward here and I think the other guys are real long shots compared to the younger guys that um that we all sort of focus on in the market so this was just more they might if they have a super good season have one last chance at getting the Ballon d'Or moving forward I want to go through the Champions League favorites so through these next few slides I'm going to go over Champions League favorites Champions League teams and clubs that'll be in the competition that might be able to make a deep run and then we'll talk about some specific players and specific teams outside of these but we're going to start with the Champions League favorites so um, the more high stakes matches a player plays in the better for their card market so we'll start by reviewing the Champions League favorites and their key players and their cards of course this is something I've talked about a lot but the the market has a very short attention span and they can't watch every single match so when the champions league comes around and everybody's focusing on one specific game or one specific set of games it's a lot easier to generate hype than having to watch one of 50 matches on a weekend you only have to watch one of four going on in a day for champions league and then as you get down to the later rounds um it's one per day and people are really tuned into those so i really like focusing on champions league players because they get uh, a lot easier amounts of attention so We'll start with Manchester City. They are the favorites. Uh, They are plus 200 in the betting markets, and they are the odds-on favorite to win the Premier League and the Champions League again this season. The key players for the soccer card market and their cards would be, of course, Erling Holland. He has his 2019 rookie sticker and a bunch of cards from the 2019 rookie season for him. Whether you like the Salzburg stuff or you like the Dortmund stuff, he has a lot of rookies to look through in 2019. Uh, And then people also sort of like his first Man City cards, like this gold prism I put up here. I'd be careful with a narrative like that but if you really like Holland specifically for playing for Man City uh, there are a lot of cards of his to collect in Man City kits and plenty more. Uh, Then you have Julian Alvarez he is in the 2022 World Cup Prism set and he has tons of options for this new 2022 slash 2023 card season that we're in right now. He's in the um He's in all the Premier League sets because he plays for Man City. He's in the Champions League sets because he plays in a Champions League club. So Julian Alvarez has no shortage of cards to go ahead and target, but he's another guy to pay attention to on Man City because he's a young forward and the market loves young forwards. Uh, Apart from those two, I think there's a pretty steep drop-off when you get to a guy like Phil Foden, just because he doesn't always feature as much um, as those two. But in the first match, all three of these guys played at the same time, and so if Pep continues to go with a squad like that, uh, that's really great for the hobby because all three of these guys are, are like, hobby just perfect in terms of uh, they're young players, they're all fairly flashy, they have pretty big hobby followings, and so for all those reasons, it's really good for the hobby if Man City continues to run out lineups like this. Uh, Phil Foden, he's in 2018 Donruss Optic. That's his main mainstream rookie. Uh, And he also has early low-numbered cards from key sets. I know his first Prism set uh, that he's in is 2019 Prism Premier League, and some of those low-numbered cards sell for a lot of money. So if you're looking at Phil Foden, those would be the first couple of places I would be looking. Uh, And then... Also, there's a chance that Man City still in this window brings in a young, exciting transfer. Uh, Fabrizio has been um, talking about Doku as a possibility for Man City. There's probably other guys as well, but I would keep an eye out uh, for the fact that they might bring in another young forward because it seems like the rumors are leaning towards there are going to be one or two more players added to that roster. 
Uh, then we'll shift over to Bayern Munich. They are plus 600 in the betting markets to win the Champions League, and they are the odds-on favorite to win the Bundesliga, and they are poised for a deep run in the Champions League, assuming they don't get matched up against Man City too soon. Uh, the key players for the soccer card market and their cards on Bayern Munich would be Harry Kane. He is in 2014 tops as a rookie sticker. He also has a 2014 tops Premier Club card, and then he's in the key sets that we also always talk about: 2017 Chrome, 2018 Prism and you can go down the line with those for Harry Kane. Um, it's interesting what's going to happen with Kane. Can he really greatly increase his legacy if he wins uh, a Bundesliga title? No, but if he wins Champions League and starts to compete for the Ballon d'Or, maybe his narrative starts looking a little different because right now um, he's just a guy that is known for not winning any trophies but scoring a lot of uh, Premier League goals. Then you have a Jamal Musiala, probably the most popular guy on this club for the hobby. Um, you can take your pick of rookies from the 2020-2021 product. Sapphire, Chrome, Merlin, those being three of my favorites, I guess. And then he has a, a ton of other sets to choose from. But Jamal Musiala will have a lot of attention on him this season. Then you have Alfonso Davies, a guy that when the soccer card market really exploded in 2020, everybody was really uh, into trying to collect or invest in. Uh, but... Since then, he's really hasn't shown the same form that he was in in 2020, and so maybe he gets back to that. He's still a very popular player in the hobby because he's a, uh, a CONCACAF player and he's a well-known name, uh, but yeah, there's some things that are holding him back. So he's in the 2018 Donner's Optic set, of course. He also has rookies from his days in the MLS, and then he's in some other key sets as well, like Sapphire and Merlin. Low-numbered stuff would be what I would be looking at. Uh, then you have teenagers galore on this roster. You have guys like Matias Tell, you have Ibrahimovic, you have Vidovic, you have Paul Warner, uh, Paul Wenner. I forget uh, if it's Warner or Wenner, something like that. Um, there's a lot of teenagers on this Bayern Munich squad. Uh, whether they feature or not is a completely different story. I wouldn't be focusing on guys like Leroy Sané or Serge Gnabry, despite the fact that they're probably going to be in the, the starting 11 for the most of the season. Uh, those guys are so old at this point and they haven't won anything significant individually that I think the market has pretty much moved on from them being a potential fear of missing out guy that you're looking for. So I would be looking at these teenagers. I don't know if any of them are going to break the starting 11 or play significant minutes in the Champions League, but these are names I would be keeping an eye on. Then we'll move on to Real Madrid. They are plus 800 in the betting market and they are the La Liga favorites uh, led by a new era of youngsters, key players for their team, as well as soccer market and the cards. Um, these are pretty obvious. You have Vinicius Jr., 2018 Donner's Optic is his mainstream rookie set, but he's also in 2018 Panini Treble. Those are a bit harder to find. Uh, and then he's in key sets like Chrome, Chrome Sapphire, Merlin in the later years of his career. So uh, I, I've stated this before. I think Vinny Jr. is going to be one of the most talked about players in the world this season. So I myself am pretty high on him. Apart from that, you have Jude Bellingham, who was the uh, big transfer this window. Uh, you can take your pick of 2020 product for him. He has Sapphire rookies, Chrome rookies, Merlin rookies, Obsidian rookies. Um, take your pick for Jude Bellingham. You have a lot of options, but he will probably be one of the most talked about players as well. Then you have Rodrigo. He's in 2019 Chronicles, uh, and that includes his Contenders Rookie Ticket card. He's in 2019 Gold Standard. And then if you go a year further out than that, you have the key sets like Merlin Stadium Club, Chrome, Sapphire, all that sort of fun stuff. Rodrigo is in those sets. He's actually not in 2022 World Cup Prism, so he doesn't really have a, a super sought-after first World Cup Prism card, but he is in a variety of other sets to look at. I've talked about Rodrigo before. I think along with Vinny Jr., there's a lot of goals that need to be scored by Real Madrid this season, and perhaps a combination of those two or these three guys will be taking up a lot of those goals. Uh, then you also have Arda Guler, who is a new transfer that they just brought in from Fenerbahce. Unfortunately, he got injured in the preseason, I believe, in training, but he should be back uh, in a few weeks or months, so keep an eye on that. He does have some rookies from his time with Fenerbahce, but I don't know if PSA is going to grade them. I don't know the whole licensing agreement. Please do your research on that, so to see if they're going to be able to get graded by PSA. I personally have no idea. I'm not interested in them, but that is a thing that's out there. Uh, and he's also in the Merlin checklist uh, that should be 
releasing over this next week here. So when Merlin comes out, all his Merlin cards will hit the market, and that has a lot more mainstream appeal in the stock card market than these Turkish rookies. So if you're interested in Guler, I would be looking at those, uh, as well as the Turkish rookies if for some reason PSA ends up grading them. But I expect the Merlin cards to be extremely expensive for Guler because they'll be the only rookies that he has uh, in terms of American-made product at least, and so that will drive some pretty high prices considering he just doesn't have a lot of stuff out there to purchase. And that is about it for Real Madrid. Keep an eye on those four guys. Uh, they'll move forward to Barcelona, uh, Real Madrid's rivals, of course. Uh, another year under Xavi as the head coach. Does this mean they'll have better results in the Champions League? We're not sure. Um, but in terms of betting odds, I think they're the fourth or fifth favorite club to win the tournament this season. So in terms of key players for the card market, as well as their cards, you have Pedri, uh, where you can take your pick of 2020 product, Sapphire and Chrome, Merlin, pick your favorite. Um, I personally like Sapphire and Chrome, but if you have other ideas, feel free to go with those. Then you have Gavi, of course, don't need to talk about him much. Pedri and Gavi, you kind of get the idea. Take your pick of product for him. He's in every single set. Pick your favorite, pick whichever one you feel uh, might hold value the best, and good luck. Then you have Anzu Fati, uh, who you can take your pick of 2019 product with. Same sets, sort of, but he has a few less uh, rookie sets than the guys that are later than him. I'd be careful with Fati. I think he's going to play minutes as long as he doesn't get hurt. But, of course, with Fati, the question is always, is he going to get hurt? So, got to be a little careful there, but his prices are so low at this point. How much further can they really drop? I'm not sure. But if he does get hurt again, obviously, they will continue to drop. Uh, then you have... Um, as Azuli, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He's a really under-the-radar sort of guy. I think his prices have started to pick up over the past couple weeks because there's been talks that he might end up uh, being a part of the main rotation for Barcelona. Um, you can take your pick of 2021 product for him. He's in Sapphire, he's in Chrome, he's in Merlin, he's in Stadium Club. He's in all those fun sets, and people don't really talk about him much, but I do think his prices are a bit on the rise because he might feature more for Barcelona than he ever has. I think he was actually on loan this past season, but now um, with Barcelona having a bit of a hole at the left wing position, no one's really sort of taken it. Uh, perhaps he ends up being the guy that is in the uh, starting 11 for them. Uh, then we drop down to Arsenal. They are plus 1,400 to win the Champions League. Um, they're back in the Champions League after a breakout season in the Premier League this past year. Uh, the key players for the soccer card market and their cards would be Bukayo Saka, who had a, an amazing first match for Arsenal this season, and he really does play well in the Prem. Um, he's one of the better players in Premier League, and he's still really young, and so I think there's a lot to like about Bukayo Saka. He has uh, 2019 rookie cards. They can be pretty rare. He has a sticker. He has a... I think it's an immaculate or an impeccable one of those sorts of sets. He's in um, the Chronicles set, but he only has one card and it's pretty hard to hit. So 2019 and 2020 are sort of seen as rookie years uh, for Bukayo Saka just because he doesn't have a lot of 2019 cards. So you can take your pick on those. I think either of them might be valid, especially the low numbered ones if Saka ends up putting together one of the better seasons in the Premier League again this year. Uh, then you have Martin Odegaard, uh, another midfielder that is really good for Arsenal. Not as flashy as Saka, doesn't score as many goals, but still a very important player for the team. He has 2014-2015 rookies, or he has some newer Arsenal cards that look really nice, low-numbered prisms, that sort of thing is what I would be looking at if I was looking at Martin Odegaard. Then you have Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli. Another mainstay in the starting 11, another young winger for Arsenal. Uh, he's in 2020 Merlin. He's in 2021 Premier League Prism. He's in 2022 World Cup Prism. So he's in some very mainstream sets, um, but he's not in every single set. Uh, he's not in Chrome Sapphire in his rookie year. He's not in Chrome in his rookie year. All, all that sort of stuff lends it good to his market that he has less cards than a traditional player. Then I also put uh, Fuller and Balogun on this list. He's probably not going to be at Arsenal, but if he is, he's worth talking about. His rookies, of course, are 2021 Premier League Prism, 2021 Score, and 2021 Revolution, and then a few odds and ends sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I think he's probably going to get transferred. He hasn't featured in the roster at all, neither on the starting 11 or on the bench this past weekend for Arsenal. So it's likely that he ends up getting a move and is not included in this list of um, Champions League competitors like Arsenal. 
Then you have Manchester United at plus 1,600. Uh, they had an up and down season that eventually landed them in Champions League qualification. I remember they started off the season horribly, and then Marcus Rashford had uh, a ridiculous run of form post-World Cup, and they ended up qualifying for the Champions League this season. Uh, the key players for the soccer card market and their cards from this club would be Rasmus Hodgland, who unfortunately is injured but just recently transferred from Atalanta, and it looks like he's going to be their starting number nine going forward. Uh, he's in 2022 Select or 2022 Chronicles, and that's it in terms of his mainstream rookie cards as of right now, so they are very expensive because they are really rare. Uh, then you have Alejandro Garnacho. You can take your pick of 2022 sets. He might be a mainstay in the starting 11 this season at a uh, at a teenage age for Manchester United. So everyone's going to sort of have their eyes on him. And he has no shortage of cards if you're looking to pick up some Garnacho stuff going into this important season for him. Uh, then you have a bit of a crapshoot at the other forward positions. Is it going to be Jaden Sancho? Is it going to be Anthony, Rashford, Mount? Uh, somebody in that group is probably going to break out and be one of the big winners this season because all those guys' cards are fairly cheap, and if one of them ends up being a um, a very, very quality starting 11 player for United and they make a good Champions League run, uh, their prices are probably going to increase. I just have no idea who it's going to be, but um, those would be the sorts of forward options that Manchester United is going to need to come through um, if they are going to go deep in the Champions League. Then you have Napoli at plus 1,600, everyone's favorite team last year. Um, they were last season's surprise, but are they this year's old news? Uh, the key players for the soccer market and their cards would be Kavicha. He's in 2022 Select or 2022 Chronicles, so he's in the same sets as Rasmus Hodgland. I haven't seen a lot of hype on Kavicha, despite the fact that, um, well, not despite the fact, it's because he hasn't gotten any transfer rumors and it seems like he's going to stay there, and everybody was sort of pricing in the fact that he was going to leave and go to a big club, uh, but that just hasn't been the case yet, so perhaps uh, there's an opportunity where his cards dip as people pay less attention to Serie A during the season, but who really knows? Um, Kavicha at some point, theoretically, will be moving to a bigger club than Napoli, but as of right now, it looks like he's going to stay. Along with Victor Osimhen, he's in 2020 Merlin, uh, he's in 2020 Serie A Mosaic, he's in 2020 Chronicles, so he has a few different rookie sets, but Obviously not as many cards as normal players do. He's not in Chrome that year. He's not in Sapphire that year. He's not in Finest. He's not in a bunch of different sets, but he is in those three. I think the hype for Osman is really dying down. Uh, I've noticed prices really pulling back to where they were before he had a, a good Champions League run last season. Um, he's older. I think he's 24 or 25 or something like that. Didn't get a big transfer that everybody was hoping for. And Napoli, despite the fact that they had a really good season last year, is just not all that well collected or followed in the hobby right now. So he just hasn't been able to sustain his prices because people were really hoping he would move to a bigger club. Uh, then you have Raspadori. He is a Italian, I believe he's a winger, um, that they just picked up in the transfer window. So perhaps he adds to the uh, attack with Kavicha and Osman. You can take your pick of 2021 product for him. I was just looking for a guy outside of the obvious two to look at, and he was one of the ones that uh, came across my radar. Uh, then you have also other forward potential transfer options. Uh, I know Wilfred... I I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but uh, Wilfred from Leeds United. Um, he's also an Italian winger slash center forward prospect that a lot of teams have been interested in since Leeds went down. Uh, it would make sense that he moves, but he hasn't moved yet, and Napoli is one of the potential suitors for him. So keep an eye out in terms of other transfers for Napoli, because if they make another deep Champions League run, it's possible that somebody else will get some shine like Kivica and Osman did last season. Uh, then we have Newcastle United. They are at plus 2,000 to win the Champions League. Uh, this is the first time they've been in the Champions League in 20 years, and in my opinion, it feels like they're flying under the radar a lot. I would classify them as an unsexy version of Brighton. Literally, everybody seems to be talking about Brighton and Brighton players, and everybody loves Brighton, but Brighton's in the Europa League while Newcastle's in the Champions League, and nobody cares about Newcastle. So it's possible that these guys are undervalued, or it's possible that nobody actually cares about Newcastle, and nobody will ever care about Newcastle, even if they do make a deep Champions League run. Uh, the key players for the soccer card market and their cards from this club would be Alexander Isaac. He's in 2019 Chronicles. He's also in 2019 Mega Cracks. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of rookie cards, and so besides the 2019 sets, he has low-numbered early 
key sets like Prism. He's in Spectra. He has a really rare on-card rookie auto from his time with Real Sociedad, I think. So uh, you have some options for Isaac, but not the usual amount because he's never played in the Champions League, so he's not in any of the Champions League-specific sets. But it looks like he's going to be the starting number nine for Newcastle, and a young starting number nine for a Champions League club, I think, is a good combination. Uh, then you have Anthony Gordon. He recently transferred it there from Everton. He's in 2022 Premier League products, whether you like Revolution or you like Mosaic or you like Prism. Uh, he's in all those sorts of products. Then on the other side of the wing, actually, I think they play the same position, Gordon and Barnes. I think they both play left wing. Um, but either of them could end up starting the Champions League. Harvey Barnes, he's in 2019 Prism. That's his rookie card. And he's also in 2020 Merlin from his time with Leicester City. So keep an eye on those two guys on the wing. Perhaps one of them ends up becoming uh, one of the stars of either the Premier League this season or in the Champions League. And then in terms of a younger guy, Elliot Anderson was one of their best performers during the preseason. He's in 2022 Premier League products like Prism, and I think he's in the select set as well. So I would keep an eye on a guy like him if he breaks through into the starting 11. Maybe he could get some hype on him because he's just a guy that not a lot of people are talking about right now, and he had a really good preseason. But we'll see if that ends up transitioning into anything more than that. Alrighty, we got through all the Champions League sort of contenders that I wanted to talk about, and now we'll switch over to young Spotlight Steelers. So, um, as I stated before, the more high-stakes matches a player plays, the better for their card market. These players on this list do not play for clubs expected to make a deep tournament run, but with the added attention of the Champions League, they could see increases with big performances. Uh, this is a list of young key players, and it, they might not score, but they should feature in the starting 11s for their clubs in the Champions League, so that gives them a good opportunity to get on the map in terms of creating headlines and getting a lot of attention on the market. So, in terms of midfielders, you have Warren Zaire Emery for PSG. Um, you can take your pick of 2022-2023 product for him. He's going to be in all of them. He's, gonna, he's in Chrome, he's in Sapphire, he's going to be in Merlin. All that fun stuff. Uh, Warren Zaire Emery. 17 year I think he's a still a 17 year old midfielder starting for PSG probably not going to score goals but he might put together a few nice dribbles and highlights and that could get people excited in the Champions League um, especially now that it seems like Mbappe is going to end up staying with PSG uh, then you have Orkan Koku for Benfica he just transferred there from Feyenoord I believe um, you can take your pick of 2022 slash 2023 product for him. He's going to be in the same sets as Zaire Emery and all the rookies from this past season. And he was actually given the number 10 kit at Benfica, so it would make sense that he ends up featuring a lot for that squad. Uh, then you have Xavi Simons from RB Leipzig. He's owned by PSG, but he's being loaned out to Leipzig this season. Both PSG and Leipzig are in the Champions League, so no matter what happens with uh, Xavi Simons, he will be playing some Champions League football. He's in 2020 Merlin and 2020 Stadium Club, and I think that's it for his rookies because he didn't get included in the... Uh, Chrome Champions League set or the Sapphire set for that season. So a few less cards for him, maybe someone to keep an eye on. He's a bit older than Zaire Emery, but an another young PSG player that might um, end up popping off in a Champions League game or two. Uh, then I listed out four forwards. Uh, Kareem Adeyemi is the obvious one. There was a lot of hype on him last season. He didn't quite live up to it. He had a lot of injuries, but he had one or two performances that were really nice. Uh, and so you can take your pick of product for him. I think it's likely that he ends up being in Dortmund's starting 11 for the majority of this season. And there's some goals that need to be picked up uh, with some departures and minutes that need to be picked up because some departures with that club. And Adeyemi seems like a guy that might pick up some of those. So I would take your pick of 2021 slash 2022 product for him. He's in Chrome, Chrome Sapphire. He's in World Cup Prisms. He's in World Cup Mosaics. There's a lot of stuff going on with Adeyemi, but I think he's going to get a lot of attention at Dortmund this season. Then you have Santi Jimenez for Feyenoord. You can take your pick of 2022-2023 product for him. Like with Zaire, Emery, and Koku, they're all going to be in all the same sets throughout this season. So I've talked about Santi Jimenez in the past. Center forward for Mexico, and he's going to be playing in the Champions League. So I think he has a lot of things going for him. 
Uh, then we have Kareem Kanate. This is a guy for RB Salzburg that as of right now does not have any cards yet, but he probably will soon. I don't think he's going to be in the Merlin set coming up, but I imagine he's either going to get a Tops now or get released in some obscure set uh, that we just uh, don't have on our radar yet. He is the starting number nine right now for our RB Salzburg as a teenager. It's not um, Roko Simic. It's not... Um, Benjamin Sesko because he's gone now. So the actual number nine right now for RB Salzburg is Kareem Kanate. So I would keep an eye on him. He doesn't have any cards yet, but he's probably uh, going to generate some news when he plays in the Champions League. Uh, then you have a guy I like quite a bit, Wesa Penda. I've talked about him in a couple videos previously. He ended up transferring to RB Leipzig, uh, and he's only in the 2022 score or 2022 FIFA select sets in terms of his mainstream card options. So you have a guy that is a young-ish, I think he's 23, center forward for a Champions League club that is only in a couple sets, and that checks a lot of the boxes I sort of like to look at. So Wesa Penda is at least on my list of guys to watch uh, coming up for the Champions League this season. Alrighty, and then I think this is the last section, young forwards with big opportunity. So it's not enough to just be a great young player or play for a heavily watched club for the sock card market for their prices to go up. In most cases in the sock card market, you need to have both. And here's a few examples of guys that could fit this description in this upcoming season. So young forwards to watch that I think have a combination of great young player that could have a great young season along with being in a very hyped and talked about club. So... You have Cody Gakpo for Liverpool. He's on the older side. I think he just turned, turned 24, but he's such a recent transfer, and he hasn't had a lot of cards yet that he still feels really new in the market, so that really helps him in terms of the shiny new object sort of thing that goes on. Um, he's in 2022 World Cup Prism, and he's in Premier League products featuring his Liverpool kit for this season that may or may not be considered rookies. I'm not sure. I'm not the manager of the Cody Gakpo market, but... Feel free to go with whatever rookie narrative you want for Gakpo. I just think he has an opportunity to have a great season with a very heavily followed club. He was in the starting 11 for their first match, so it's possible he ends up being a member of the starting 11 going forward. Then you have Goncalo Ramos for PSG. He's in the 2020 Merlin set. That is his only rookie card set for 2020, so it's super easy to understand his market. He transferred from Benfica to PSG, and if he ends up being in the PSG starting 11 with Kylian Mbappe, that's obviously going to be great for his attention. Uh, then you have one of my favorite players, Mudrik for Chelsea. You can take your pick of product for him. He's in all the 2022 slash 2023 rookie sets. Chrome, Chrome Sapphire, Obsidian, Finest, he's going to be in all of them. Prisms, all that sort of fun stuff is out there for Mudrik if you'd like to pick him up. He still is not a mainstay in the starting 11 for Chelsea. There's a lot of turnover in that roster. It's kind of hard to figure out how it's all going to fit together, uh, but he is a guy that could be worth watching. Then you have uh, his Chelsea teammate, Nicholas Jackson, a guy I've talked about in previous videos as well. Uh, he's in 2022 Select La Liga and 2022 Chronicles, and those, I believe, are his only two rookie card mainstream sets. So he has very few sets. He's already broken into Chelsea's starting 11 as the striker. So if Chelsea has a good season, it would make sense that he has a good season. Uh, but I have noticed his prices have gotten fairly expensive over the past couple weeks, ever since he sort of took the uh, starting number nine spot uh, in the preseason. His Prices have gotten pretty expensive. Uh, then you have the Brighton forward spot. I think this is a spot where just uh, everybody seems to be paying a lot of attention to. Whether it ends up being Julio Enciso or Joao Pedro or Evan Ferguson or the guy that just scored that this last week. Uh, his first name is Simon, and he's going to be in the Merlin set. Maybe it ends up being him. Maybe it's Mohamed Kudus on a transfer. But there's an open forward spot that needs to be filled at Brighton by somebody, and everybody seems to have Brighton as their new favorite team. Um, they play really attacking-focused football. Uh, and, yeah, it's just a really fun team to watch, and a lot of people are watching them, and they're going to play in Europe in the Europa League. So with all that attention and an open forward spot that needs to be filled by somebody, you have a lot of different options there, and I think whoever ends up getting that spot is probably going to be in line for some nice price increases over the course of this season. Alrighty, and in conclusion, um, this is it. The new era is upon us. The old guard has retired, been benched, or is shipped out of Europe, leaving the new stars to fight for all of the glory. I imagine this will increase the amount of volatility in the market for active players, since their legacies can greatly change greatly based on speculation of what happens over the next few seasons and today. So, with that being said, 
the vast majority of Ultramon cards are going to trend to zero dollars, of course, as players fail to live up to expectations, but you can still enjoy the ride as long as you're aware of the obvious risk. These active Ultramodern players are going to continuously go up and down in value based on people's perception of where their career is heading, and once it terms once it's been determined that their career is not going to reach superstardom go level their prices are just going to continuously drop as their career continues and that sort of next go just never happens for them their prices go down down and down see a guy like timo werner for example for that uh, the goats of the generation past are not going to zero dollars, and you might be able to start collecting them at a discount as they fade away from the more speculative gambling nature of the active players in the market. So for this, I'm talking about guys like Cristiano Ronaldo, guys like Neymar, not so much Messi because he's so heavily in the spotlight being in the MLS. Um, guys like, I guess, Muller if he's not in the Bayern starting 11 anymore. Guys like... Buffon, who just retired, guys like Iniesta, who is still playing in guitar, I think. Guys like that, I think their prices probably, it would make sense for them to continue to dip because there's no speculation on them in the market right now. Um, but the guys like that with legacies in place, their cards are not going to go to zero dollars unless the entire market was a scam and nobody actually cares about soccer cards and they're just all gambling. But I don't believe that to be the case. I think there's some actual collectors out there for that sort of stuff. So uh, as those guys continue to fade away in their careers and everybody focuses on the shiny new objects, the ultra modern market, whether that be Holland, whether that be Mbappe, whether that be Mudrik, whether that be whoever you want to put out there that's taking the headlines in the ultra modern market. As the goats of our previous generation sort of fade away into the uh, the halls of history, uh, it would make sense, for, at least in my opinion, for their cards to decrease in the short term. But as long as they have a strong collector base, those cards should not be going to zero. And if you want to pick up those guys for your collection, you might be able to pick them up on bigger discounts as they continue to fade. And then, as always, the final point here, collect, buy, sell, trade, and gamble on what you like and enjoy this hobby because it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun this next season, and I can't wait. Um, I spent pretty much the entire weekend this past weekend just watching uh, the games on TV or following on box scores on my phone. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to be in this market, a lot of fun to watch all these matches, and I look forward to the rest of this season. Um, we'll be along for the ride here. The next video, I'll probably be going over the Merlin checklist once it gets finalized, and I can talk about all the rookies that are in that set that don't have cards in any other set. Uh, you guys know how much I love the Merlin product, so I'll do a whole video once again this season dedicated to that. But without further ado, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.